Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the end behavior of polynomial functions. So I'll give the definition first and actually summarize our main conclusions, and then we'll go through it with some examples. So we say the end behavior is a description of how a function f behaves as we go to the edges of the graph for the inputs. So this is going to look like as x goes to negative infinity and as x goes to positive infinity. So our end behavior is a description of what happens at these ends of the function. The end behavior gives us a way to explain what the graph of the function looks like or how the function behaves as our inputs get extremely negative, so approaching negative infinity, or extremely positive, approaching positive infinity. Now, I like to write the end behavior using limit notation. So we're not going to formally define limits here, You'll use limits in a calculus context if you take a calculus course, but for now we're just going to use the notation as a way to help us out since this is really the proper way to talk about end behavior. So we're going to write the end behavior mathematically as the limit, this is this LIM, as x approaches negative infinity of our function f of x. So this is just saying what happens to the function as x approaches negative infinity, and then this is going to be equal to something. Then we also say the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x, and that will also be equal to something. So on our graph, the x approaches negative infinity is the left-hand side. So that's as our x values, our input values, approach negative infinity. And then the approaching positive infinity is the right-hand side. So these are the x values as we go to the right, what happens to the function as we keep going that direction. So I know this is really general. Let me summarize our conclusions and then we'll try it out with a graph. So what we're going to do is make some conclusions about polynomial functions based on their degree and their leading coefficient. So this information alone is going to be enough to tell us something about the end behavior of the function. So it gives us a sense for what the polynomial is doing, even if we don't know all the details. So for our degree, this is going to be some number, so it could be like a second degree polynomial, a fourth degree polynomial, a fifth degree polynomial, etc. And so we really care if this is even or odd. So is that number of the degree an even number or an odd number? Then we look to the leading coefficient. So when we learned quadratic functions, if the leading coefficient was positive, the parabola opened upward. But if it was negative, it opened downward. So there's going to be a similar effect here. So we want to consider if the leading coefficient is positive or negative. And so we have four possibilities. We look at the degree, it's even. Does it then have a positive or negative leading coefficient? Or we have a degree that's odd, and does it have a positive or negative leading coefficient? So I'm going to show us an example of each of these, but these are the conclusions we're going to come to about the end behavior, just so you can sort of start to see what I'm talking about. This is my shorthand for writing it. We'll also practice with the limits. So if we have an even degree polynomial that has a positive leading coefficient, both of the ends are going to go upward as we go to the edges of the graph. So I write it with like the two edges going up and then some squiggles in the middle because we don't necessarily know what happens in between just from this information. So this is like having a quadratic or a parabola with a positive leading coefficient. A quadratic function has a degree of two, so it's an even degree. We'll do an example, but this is why it faces this upward way with this end behavior. Then we have even and negative. This has both ends facing downward. Then we could have an odd degree, but with a positive leading coefficient. This has the left side going down, but the right side going up. And odd and negative is the opposite. So the left side goes up and the right side goes down. So this is sort of my little cheat sheet that I like to come back to, and I just wanna show it to you now so that we can keep referencing it as we need to. So I'm going to show you an example of each of these cases, and in that way we really could fill this in as we go, but I just wanna give it to you now so you know where we're heading. Okay, let's look at our first example. Let's suppose we have the function f of x equals x squared. So you can see the graph here. This is our standard parabola. It has a degree of 2 and a leading coefficient of 1. So the degree being 2, 2 is an even number, so this has even degree. 
and then the leading coefficient is one, which is a positive number. So we have an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, and we see this end behavior where both of the ends of the function, as we go to the left and to the right of the graph, go up. So this is like my little shorthand way of writing it, but then we could also write this with limit notation. So we could say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function, so that's on the left-hand side, it's equal to infinity. So what's happening as we go to the left is we're going to the positive infinity. Then we do the same for the right. The limit as x approaches infinity of the function is positive infinity. So as we go to the right-hand side, the outputs of the function get more positive. So both of these are positive. You could either draw this little shape or write the official limit way to describe the end behavior. Now, this is going to become different when we change the function slightly. So if I have negative x squared, I'm changing that leading coefficient. So we can see here that the graph changes. We now have both of the ends going downward. So the degree is still even, but now the leading coefficient is negative one, which is a negative value. So we have an even degree, a negative leading coefficient, and we see these two ends going downward. So I would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function is negative infinity. So that's as we go to the left, so the outputs are getting more negative, and we write that as negative infinity. Then for the right-hand side, we do the same thing. The limit as x approaches infinity of the function is negative infinity. So as the inputs get more positive, the outputs get more negative. So this is like a kind of complicated thing, I think, to get your head around at first. I tend to like to have something I can reference, like these little pictures, and I see that we have negative infinity on the left and negative infinity on the right, and as long as you can match them up, that should help. So this similar thing is going to happen for any even degree polynomial that has either a positive or a negative leading coefficient. So both ends will go up or both ends will go down, you could play around on Desmos and try some different functions, as long as they have an even degree, so the highest power is a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, etc. It's always going to have both ends going the same direction. Now let's repeat this process for odd degree polynomials. So let's look at the function f of x equals x cubed. So here you can see our end behavior is different. We have the left-hand side going down and the right-hand side going up. So our degree here is three and the leading coefficient is one. So this is an odd polynomial with a positive leading coefficient. This has the end behavior of the left side going down and the right side going up. And we can use limit notation to describe this. So we'd say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function that's the left-hand side, that's equal to negative infinity, since we're going down. Then as the limit approaches positive infinity of the function, that's to the right-hand side, our limit is positive infinity, since we're going up in that direction. So this is a really formal way to just describe what's happening in the graph, which we could also represent with sort of a little sketch. Doing this helps us distinguish this type of polynomial from our even degree polynomials where both of the ends went in the same direction. So you can imagine now when we change the sign of the leading coefficient, our graph is going to switch. So if we have a negative x cubed, this is still a degree three polynomial, but it has a negative one as its leading coefficient. So it has a negative leading coefficient. Another way to think about this is that that negative is like a reflection over the horizontal axis. So we're taking our outputs and changing the sign. And so we're doing this reflection over the x axis. So here on the left-hand side of the graph, we're going up, and on the right-hand side of the graph, we're going down. So I would say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function, that's the left-hand side, is equal to positive infinity. And then the limit as x approaches infinity of the function, so that's the right-hand side, is then negative infinity. So again, we can use our math notation, we can draw our little picture, and we have just a way to describe the graph without getting too complicated about what's going on in between. So here we looked at x squared and x cubed to help us fill in our table where we have the degree and the leading coefficient and how it affects the end behavior. So let's try this out on a more complicated example. Let's look at the function f of x equals negative one fifth x to the fourth minus seven fifths x cubed plus x squared plus 15x. 
So here, we want to describe the end behavior of this function. I'm noticing that the degree is 4, so 4 is that largest power, and 4 is an even number. So this has degree 4. Then the leading coefficient is negative 1 fifth, which is a negative value. So we have an even degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient. So from my little chart that I made at the beginning of the video, we can expect both ends of the graph to be pointing downward. So when we go to graph it, we should see the same thing. First, let's write our conclusion. So if we have both ends pointing down, the left-hand side is the limit as x approaches negative infinity. That's going to be negative infinity, since it's going down. And then we do the right-hand side. That's the limit as x approaches positive infinity, which is also negative infinity, since it's going down. So both limits are negative infinity, since both ends go down. And when we go to graph this, we should see the same thing. So here's our graph of the polynomial. I'm noticing that as we go to the left-hand side of the graph, the outputs get more negative, so they're going down. This tells me that as x approaches negative infinity, it goes to the left, the outputs go down, so they approach negative infinity also. Then we can do the same thing on the right. So as we go more to the right of the graph, as the inputs get more positive, x approaches positive infinity, our outputs get more negative, they're going down. So the function values approach negative infinity. So we can talk about end behavior just by looking at the graph, but we can also make some conclusions just by looking at the degree and the leading coefficient of our formula. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.